What do you want to talk about today? Oh. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm Mark. This is Tank Talking until we come up with a different name. And that's entirely like likely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chris and I have got a huge love, yeah, you, of World War II and, and everything about it, the history, the, the geopolitical stuff, but especially armor. <laughs> Tanks of the Second World War from anybody, from Germans, Americans, obviously we're kind of biased towards, towards the American stuff. Uh, so far, I, I kind of dig on uh, the uh, German tanks. But the most gorgeous tanks of the war, hands down, Germans. <laughs> Germans, they made some beautiful tanks. Uh, just sidebar? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. Wouldn't expect anything else. <laughs> I like the punky up. Mm. Just as a side note, we will be talking about other things in the future. We'll be talking about, yes. Uh, weapons, tactics, tidbits of history, battles. So it's always worth your while to come back, see what uh, see what's happening in the uh, foxhole, and join join in the conversation. I can I say mean, that, right? That's not too uh, suggestive. There's a lawyer at the door. The the foxhole. <laughs> okay. Like I said, join into the conversation. We don't assume that we're you know that we know everything about this. If you've got information. I don't assume that I know everything <laughs> about this stuff. Today, we're going to talk about something a little different, but that dovetails nicely into what we talked about the first first time. Yeah. Which are tank destroyers. That's kind of like a tank, isn't it? It's like a tank, but actually tankers didn't even accept tank destroyers as real tanks. Kind of like the Navy to, to the Marines. Well, interesting point. Tank destroyers, at least the American ones, were not fitted with a hull mounted machine gun in the front. I it, think we're jumping ahead of ourselves. Just just showing the difference between the two. Is this a sidebar? No, ah, this is because I didn't see the little thing across okay, the bottom. All right. So Mark, what uh, what hang on. Okay. No, you can talk when I'm drinking. Oh okay. Well, well you said hang on. This isn't a ventriloquist okay. act. Um, so in the beginning when uh, World War II, when America realized it needed something to take out tanks. Uh, I don't think we were even actually in the war yet, but the American doctrine was that you had tanks. We, we talked about this in the first episode, so maybe jump back and see that one. But we had tanks and we had tank destroyers. Two different roles. Tank destroyers were supposed to take out tanks. Tanks, like the M4 Sherman, were designed for infantry support. We covered all that. So. When we start looking at tank destroyers, I mean, what did the Americans first come up with? Oh, that was a classic. So they put a 37 millimeter on the back of a Dodge truck. <laughs> so now you know where ISIS got the idea. I mean, that, that, that was it. 37 millimeter anti-tank gun was a decent anti-tank gun at the time it came out. And only at that time. For those 10 minutes. Exactly. It was great. Um, but recognizing the kind of armor that it was up against, it was a small high velocity shell. But, I mean, just picture that. Well, you're probably going to picture that. Yes. You've got a Dodge truck with a 37 millimeter cannon mounted in the back of it. Something you can't get away with now. Let's take that into battle, shall we? What was next? Well, after that was, they actually did play with the idea of, of the, the towed anti-tank gun. The doctrine at the time was they would anticipate where the Germans were going to attack. They would spread out all of their anti-tank guns along the battle line. And the Germans were like, yeah, we don't think we want to do that anymore. And so instead, they put their... Uh, their forces into a one narrow punch, as it were, one closed fist, <laughs> and it overwhelmed the anti-tank gun placements. Boom, and they went right through, and all every, everybody else is going. Like, you're, you're, you've got to admit, it would have been great had the Germans just done exactly what we expected them to do. Yeah, it would have been awesome. So, 
clearly a 37 millimeter gun was not big enough. So we go, well, what else you got? And they said, well, we got a 75 millimeter. We'll stick that on the back of a half pack. <laughs> that's what they did. Yeah, that's a that's an artillery piece. That's an artillery piece, but you know what? It looked cool. You got a tracked vehicle. You've got a big gun. I don't know that it's any more mobile, but you know the concept is there. The first showing of the anti-tank platform was in Africa, North or South? North Africa. North Africa was in North Africa in a place called El El Guitar Guitar something like that. It's down here. It was the M3 and what we'll later get to is the M10 Wolverine. And there were 37 of them that went up against a, a battalion of German tanks. Not British. No, okay. we, were, we were allies with the British. Were we? Yeah, pretty well, much. I mean, you learn something new every day, don't you? That's why we have Benny Hill. Ooh, and Monty Python. And Monty Python, that's right. Uh, and... It was with mixed results. You're taking two things that aren't designed to work together and kind of mashing them together. Now it looked way cool to have this big 75 millimeter uh, cannon up on top of a, of a half track, but in practicality, sure, it worked pretty well in that one battle. Yeah. But then after that, we're like, you know what? We're not quite there yet. So then they came up with the M10. Well, that's it for part one of Tank Talk. Thank you for watching. Join in the conversation and leave your comments below. And if you like this, hit that like button. Please subscribe. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time in Tank Talk with Mark and Chris.